Hello and welcome to Conflict Times. My name is Sebi Kazmi and you're watching today's uh, hot news, which is Russia could invade Ukraine at any time. Is it a real threat? It will happen or it's just a media hype created to gain viewership and make mountain out of mole? What is the reality? Or perhaps it's a military posturing at the border is already doing enough damage. And how is the world responding to all of this? We look at the major countries and more importantly, what Ukrainians and Russians are saying. They are the major party in this conflict. So it is very important to hear them. While the timing around any potential escalation of this tension between the Kremlin and Ukraine remain a mystery, the world is already responding. Number of countries have canceled their flights. They have also canceled their flight operations. Embassies have been evacuated and travelers have been urged to return home amid warnings that the situation could rapidly deteriorate. If it's not true, why making such a big fuss? War experts and the think tanks are predicting differently. If we look at US perspective, it could happen any day now. But hang on, if it's so serious and real, why did they have their diplomatic channels opened up so far? Are they failed to ease the tension? Clearly not, because they are the one telling the world it could happen any day now. Speaking on Sunday, the US President Joe Biden's national security advisor, Jack uh, Sullivan, he told CNN in an interview that invasion could begin at any day now. We cannot perfectly predict the day, but we have now been saying for some time that we are in the window. Of course you can't. US intelligence couldn't. Nobody could confirm it. Joe Biden has been blamed as a war mongrel in the past. His stance on Middle East, Afghanistan, Yemen has indicated, whereas his previous president, Donald Trump, was very different. Joe Biden predictably mentioned possible tough anti-Russian sanctions in the context of the tense situation around Ukraine. He said, yes, Russia has more than 175,000 troops massed near Ukraine. But Russia is a big bully. We all know that. But they just don't want anyone to come near them. And this is why Russia is constantly denying any such plan and has accused the West of hysteria. Some experts said that it could be a surgical strike, a limited operation, or a surprise false flag operation, which will then lead to a full-scale war. But they're just waiting for the right time. Now, another theory which the US is presenting, that it could happen after the Beijing Olympics, which is ending on 20th of February, just six days from now. And why they are waiting till the end of Olympics? They don't want to ruin the charm of Olympics as it is organized by China, a closed ally of Russia. However, Jack Sullivan said that the Olympics will not stop Russia from invading once they are ready because they do have fresh forces arriving at the Ukrainian border. So do we start counting the days now? Number six, number five, number four, three, two, one, go. No. So the U.S. started working on a military support and also economic support for Ukraine. Though they have taken the money out of the Afghan fund and used it for the 9-11 victims, which has already been heavily criticized in America and around the world. Why not taking it from Saudis, who were ultimately responsible for 9-11? I mean, their names were there in the list, though. But what is UK and France are thinking on this possible invasion? Britain has been supplying anti-tank weapons and training personnel to Ukraine, although those troops were ordered to leave at the weekend. Now, France is very clear. This is very tricky. France is very clear on this. 
they think the US and the UK and allies are overreacting. They call it proactive speculation around an allegedly planned Russian invasion. French president spoke to Vladimir Putin for 19 minutes and then they came up with this statement, which is, we see no indication in what President Putin says that he's going to go on the offensive. We are nevertheless extremely vigilant and alert to the Russian military postures in order to avoid the worse. Now, what has Russia had to say about all that? Which is very important because they are the main party in this case. Russia has repeatedly denied any plan to make a move on Ukraine. They want Ukraine to meet the security demands that Russia made of the West late last year. That includes a veto on Ukraine ever joining NATO. Now, how about Ukraine? What do they think about this? Which is very interesting. Ukrainian Prime Minister Volodymyr Zelensky has repeatedly downplayed warning from the West, questioning the increasingly strident statement U.S. official in recent days that Russia could be planning to invade as soon as midweek, mean Wednesday. So today is Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday. We understand all the risk. We understand there are risks, he said in a, in a broadcast on a Saturday. And he's really fearful for his economy. He's worried. He's worried for a fragile economy. But also, he and his civilian and military leaders were preparing defense, soliciting and receiving a flow of arms from the US and the other NATO members. Now, finally, the most important question, what Russia want from this? Why would they invade at all? The experts are talking about this, noting that a full-scale war in Ukraine does not really fit into how the Kremlin has used hard power in the geopolitical games. They're looking into past history. Now, Russian decision makers, they know very well that they do not have the means to maintain a large-scale war. Also, the financial sanctions that will be imposed by the US and its allies in NATO, that could be very, very disastrous situation for Russia. They can't afford it. And all they can do is to maintain a huge number of troops and create trouble through cyber attacks. They're very famous. Remember, Russian hackers are the best, the brilliant in the business right now. They can damage Ukraine through this. They can even damage in the past US as well, when they took bitcoins and money and all that. But the question, million dollars question still remains. What happens after six days? Stay tuned, keep watching, and I'll keep updating you. My name is Sebi Kazmi, and you're watching Conflict Times. See you next time.